I, 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 I was away last week. So I wasn't here for the, the, the sort of pomp of the latest Extinction Rebellion protests. And I, I've got, I, I don't follow the news as closely when I'm on holiday as I do when I'm not on holiday, as I'm sure you'll understand. So I've got sort of edited highlights in my memory bank. So did they, did they, they shut bridges, didn't they? They were going for Tower Bridge, I think, while I was away, and then London Bridge yesterday. And what is weird about this? Can I confide in you briefly? the five minutes after 11 is the time when I started doing this job I, I, if you weren't listening and God knows hundreds of thousands of people weren't who are now but the 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 temptation to do the to do the lazy stuff was almost irresistible I didn't realize it was lazy I got to be honest with you I mentioned to you I think on Tuesday where we used to sit on obesity conversations and it was very much where most sort of unhealthy middle-aged white journalists or columnists sit and it's all about shouting eat less exercise more without having the first idea what you're talking about or any understanding whatsoever of how complicated the issue is and how much harm you're doing not to the just to the issue itself but to people struggling with uh, mental health issues, struggling with poor diet, poor information. I, so I, I, I carry a burden of embarrassment for that position. I did it with this as well. I don't know why. I, I'm not anti... What's the word? I'm not a climate change sceptic. I never have been by any stretch of the imagination. But I think the resentment I felt at... What's the, what is it? What is it that makes us resent? You can pretend that you're deeply concerned about ambulances not getting through. But frankly, unless you're in the ambulance, that's a bit of a reach, you know, because the number of people whose health is going to be damaged or whose lives are going to be ended by failing to address the climate crisis is going to, I think it's fair to say, is going to dwarf the number of people whose medical treatment might be delayed or disrupted by a protest on a bridge in London to, to a factor of several million. I, I guess that is that, that presumably is the trade-off for the protesters. So 10 years ago, if you tuned into this program, I suspect I'd have been banging the drum about, what did I used to call them? Patchouli-oiled muesli munchers who knit their own armpit, who knit their clothes out of their own armpit hair, or something like that. You're familiar with this. It's a, but Sadly, in the English media, it's a very well-rewarded mindset if you've got away with words and, and, and you have a an ability to sort of bully people with a smile on your face. And there's no limit to the amount of uh, uh, success you can enjoy in the English media, particularly if you're directing your ire and your bile at, at, at either voiceless or largely vulnerable individuals or groups. And your, your average climate change activist historically was typified as swampy. There was a fellow who, who dug himself under a mooted motorway and stayed there for a very, very long time. And he, he became a sort of totemic figure. And I went the wrong way on that. I, I was being honest. I mean, you know, it was what I felt. And I took that nasty feeling. And what was it a feeling of? Is it is it a resentment of being told what to do? Is it is it the same as the anti-mask wombles? Actually, that's not fair on wombles. The sort of anti-mask characters who, who, who are... More, is it just you feel that you haven't got much control in your life? Because, I don't know, you can only see the kids at weekends. And therefore, when someone else comes along and tells you that you've got to wear a mask, it, it, it's got nothing to do with the mask. It's got everything to do with the fact that you can only see the kids at weekends. Is that what it is? It's, it's like that. I, I can't, I've got no control over my life. And now these people are telling me that I've got to wear a mask as well. Is that what it is? So you, you don't have much control over your life. And now someone's parked a bloody great bus in the middle of London Bridge and it's going to take you eight minutes longer to get to work than it would have done otherwise. Or 80 minutes. I don't want to you know, minimize the impact on your life. Is it? I don't know. But I'm talking about myself now. So I, I'm trying to work out why did I rail again? Why did I bridle? Moosley munching ne'er do well, flip flop, flipping sandal wearing, moosley munching, armpit hair knitting numpties. I, I was obsessed with patchouli oil. I was like, they always smell of patchouli oil. Probably younger listeners don't even know what patchouli oil is. And we used to use the word crusty. Do you remember the word crusty? Some of my best friends were crusties. But that word was used as a terrible pejorative to describe sort of people who, I don't know, cared about the environment. Before it was cool, might be one way of putting it. So I had that. I suffered from that. I, 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 and, and the weirdest thing about it was the, um, I, the, 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 the way it crossed over into rave culture, which I was 
very much a part of, very, very, very much a part of rave culture. And it crossed over with the sort of new age crusty culture. And yet I still managed to muster up this performative disgust at people who were prepared to dig themselves under motorways to stop uh, developments or to stop ancient trees being chopped down. And that's a, that's a different, obviously, a slightly different proposition from the... Um, uh, uh, Extinction Rebellion protest today, but it's part of the backdrop. We're trying to understand all the angles. The, the, before we hear from the Mayor of London, I just Keith, keep the clock ticking. I'm being nice to texters who, who need my help rather than my anger. So you remember I said a moment ago, of course you can pretend to care about an ambulance that can't get through because of a protest, but unless you're actually in it or your loved ones are actually in it, it's 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 not a very convincing flex, is it? Because you don't spend the rest of your life worrying about the health of complete strangers. Um, Paul has been in touch. So I wonder if you'd feel the same thing if it was one of your children in that ambulance trapped in traffic. Yes, that's exactly what I said, Paul. Is it, if it is someone you love, then it's a very powerful image. That's why tabloid journalists use it. They don't want you to think. They just want you to feel. But of course... All of our children, all of our grandchildren, all of our great-grandchildren potentially face oblivion if we don't fix this problem. So unless you've got a better idea than what this lot are doing, I, I, I think it might be best to observe a, a brief period of silence. I